Good afternoon. My name is Matteo Rosati, and I am a senior at Marymount International School of Rome. Ladies and gentlemen, since the birth of the first great public speakers, there has been one word that has been constantly overused and stripped of most of its meaning. That word is the word inspirational. Nowadays, saying that word in connection with a speech or a person is like saying that if someone dies during an IB exam, everybody gets a seven. It obviously isn't true, but it will make a lot of people wonder. So imagine my surprise when my school's IB coordinator gave me the guidelines for writing this speech that the IBO gave her, and I saw the phrase, be inspirational. Hmm. So I thought about it for a couple of days, and then I realized that I couldn't. What I instead could do is give you educators what I believe to be the five pillars of the IB experience. Now follows a very short and gross oversimplification of the IB program and the massive impact it has on its students. Here we go. Number one, the word baccalaureate. I've been an IB student for the past two years. I've known students who finished the IB program one, two, even three years ago, and I know students who start the IB program this year. One thing links them all and makes them all part of the same community, that none of them, and I do include myself, know how to spell the word baccalaureate. <laughs> Number two, sacrifice. Whenever a student starts the AIB program, he or she rapidly realized that most of his or her personal life has suddenly been forfeited for something bigger and hopefully more important. I don't know whether it's a sudden avalanche of deadlines and assignments or what IB professors call a gradual change in priorities that causes this relinquishing of food and family and friends and peace of mind and lightheartedness and sleep and vacation. <laughs> but I do know that what follows is two years of sacrifice and hard work. This, however, ladies and gentlemen, is for the student to understand that whatever difficulties he will face in the rest of his life will be nothing compared to what he faced in the last two years of high school. <laughs> I guess this is my way of saying that the IB really does prepare you like nothing else for the future. <laughs> Number three, you have to be lucky. The probability of the birth of any of the people in this room is very similar to the probability of a unicorn appearing anywhere in the universe. You are all extremely lucky, and so are all IB students, although they might not think it. They are lucky to have been born into the sort of family that went on to make the decision to put their child through the IB program, and they're lucky to have had their exam marked by that particular examiner. Hopefully, they're also lucky that they passed. The IB teaches one of the most basic lessons of human society, that the blind goddess is everywhere. She is like a preoccupied mother. You think she isn't following you, but then you realize she installed an app on your phone that tells her where you are at all times. The IB teaches you to treasure your life as the collection of unlikely, random, but precious events it is comprised of, and to be compassionate towards those who are not as lucky as you are. Number four, curiosity does not kill the cat. The desire to always know more is a positive thing, and the IB program lets you explore very deeply the subjects that interest you. It can be said that the IB is one proud sponsor of that intrinsic human quality that is curiosity. Without it, I would never have known that combinatorial game theory can help solve chess game endings, or that chaos theory can help predict the patterns of arrhythmic human hearts. Descartes was right when he said, I think, therefore I am. But I like to add, in all my modesty, I want to know more, therefore I live. Number five, finally, enjoy the small things. When you're an AB student, every small thing is wonderful. 
when your history professor decides not to give you homework, <laughs> when your English professor has to be, has to proctor orals and can't be in class, when your physics test contains a question very similar to one you just did in class, those are the moments when life is utterly beautiful. <laughs> I'm obviously being facetious, but I truly believe that the IB has taught me to enjoy those small great parts of life. The problem you could not complete that now you can. The word you did not know how to spell that now you know the meaning of. The event you didn't know you even existed and now that you can list all the causes of. This, these small, incredible details, the IB has taught me and others to enjoy. Now, it is with great honor that I introduce to you an internationally known author, um, scholar, and public speaker. He is an expert at examining the implications of globalization and technology on education. When I first was researching about him, I saw a speech that he made uh, on TED, and he struck me, first, as a great public speaker, he's very funny, and secondly, as an intelligent man who understands the significance of what he's talking about. Named one of the most, one of the ten most influential people in education and technology by Tech and Learn magazine. Please welcome Dr. Young Zhao, and thank you very much.